most famous physical therapist on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Together we are the most famous physical therapist on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Brad, today we're going to talk about absolute best groin pain, self-treatments, exercises, and stretches that you can do. Guaranteed. So that's, that's quite a complex sentence, Bob. Let's, right. let's get into it. All right. Today, um, we're going to talk about this, where you get a con it's a common injury, especially in football and soccer, mm -hmm. uh, especially soccer, I think, when you're doing those cross passes right. and stuff like that. Right, a lot of lateral motion. So it's very, you know, pretty easy to diagnose a lot of times. You're going to get any pain in the groin or in the th inner thigh. Right. There's some actually some pretty good-sized muscles in here. The groin muscles consist of, what, four muscles? Yep, at least adductor longus, adductor brevis, pectineus. Now, in addition to uh, bringing the legs in and across, they also flex the, the hip. Right. So right. you may have some pain, Brad, when you lift your leg up like this. Right. Mm -hmm. You're going to have some pain when you stretch your leg out to the side. Right. One of the good telltale signs is if you squeeze your legs together. Like sure. if you put a fist, squeeze your legs together, and that hurts in that area. Right. Pretty good sign that you pulled the muscle there and pulled the groin muscle. The, the primary job of the groin is to bring the leg to the midline or to the center, but they do stabilize, they do some flexion. There's no muscle that just does one thing. Right, right. So there's usually third degrees of injury, three degrees of injury, <laughs> third degree, three degrees of injury, um, and the third degree is where you actually tear the muscle. So. In that instance, my guess is you're going to be seeing an orthopedic surgeon quite often because it's a complete tear. Right. So right, that's very uncommon. I wouldn't think that happens that much. Yeah, we're, we're going to kind of put that to the side. Yeah, so we're talking about the first degree or second degree tears. Sure. So um, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to ice. You're going to start by icing. Yep, red cold it's, pack. it's not going to feel very good. You got one? Yeah, oh, we got one that. right here. And you may do that in a recliner laying down and get that cold pack in there and just relax for 20, 30 minutes. Avoid things that irritate it, that make it hurt. Yeah, we actually have an old video, Brad, of how to make an ice pack. I think I'll link that up. Yeah, so, put it up there, yeah, Bob. Because that, that, it's actually very helpful. Right, because especially some of these, our new, our new people who are, haven't watched this right. before and realize that we have a lot of videos that can help them stay safe, healthy, strong, vibrant, et cetera, which makes et cetera. Us, which makes us beg you that or if you're watching for the first time, please take a second to go ahead and hit the subscribe button okay. because we upload every day. You bet. Back to the old adductor muscles. Okay. Growing so stream. we started off with some ice, and you're actually going to rest it, too. I mean, you can't be out there playing when, you're, when you've injured this. Right, Sorry. right. I mean, you can, you know, um, you maybe can do some things that don't hurt, I mean, right. Probably like walking, right? But um, anything that's going to put stress on that muscle, you can't, yeah. you can't be doing. So then, uh, this is kind of the crux of the treatment, Brad. Is you're going to start off some cross fiber friction massage. Sure. And um, ideally, you you'd like to do this in long stretches, but you probably won't be able to because because your hands are going to fatigue. Right. But very simply, what you're going to do is you're going to get yourself in a position where I'm going to go this way, Brad. Actually. Let's say this is my injured leg, Brad. Yep. I'll put it up here, and the injury is going to be quite up near the groin quite often. Usually right. it's in the musculotendinous ju junction. It can be in the muscle itself. It can be where the tendon attaches to the bone, too. Sure, yep. But most often it's at where the tendon beats the muscle. Right. So, and you'll know because it's going to be the tender spot. It's going to be the tender spot. Right. That's, mm -hmm. about, that's all you need to look for right. is what, where, where does it hurt. You can take one finger on top of another, two fingers together, whatever, whichever you're going to do, and you're going to go in there and you're going to find this tender spot and you're going to rub up and down across the fibers. Right. That's why it's called cross fiber. Right. The and, fibers go lengthwise to the leg. We're going across them. Yep. And this is going to get more blood flow to the area. The other thing it's going to help with, Brad, as you know, is it's going to help take care of some of that scar tissue yep. that's getting laid Break down. Break up right that away. scar tissue so when it heals, yeah. it heals healthy and strong. Right, because when scar tissue is laid down, it's a laid down in an erratic fashion. So it's kind of like chaos. Right. It's like a web. You're doing wonderful words today, Bob. Yeah, I'm trying to come yeah. up with a little Good deal. increased vocabulary. All right, we better keep going. So this is going to help those fibers align. Now, the problem, like I said, is... You know, Syriax, who invented this, and, and by the way, you're going to push pretty hard, Brad. Yeah, there's you, a lot of muscle there, so you yeah, want to get deep. You want to get really onto that, and, and ideally what you should feel after 30 seconds, 40 seconds, maybe a minute, is that it actually starts to feel a little bit better yep. or the pain levels out. Right. If you do this and it just hurts, 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 and gets worse, back off, ice for a while, and then come back to it again. Right, it's too early. So, but they had, rec he, C-Rex recommends 20 minutes, two times a week for three to four weeks. Sure. 
but um, I, most people can't do twenty. There's nobody that can. All right, do when you're minutes. doing that cross fiction, your fingers get tired. Yeah. Mine get tired after about five minutes, and that's all. I and can that's say. usually what I would say is five minutes. You could do that four times a yep. week. Um, sure. And and uh, you know it it you can actually ice then afterwards if sure. you if you uh, fire it up a little bit. <laughs> um, then, so, then what are we going to do? Well, after that, then after a few, I'd say, you know, after the pain starts to come down, you're going to want to start doing some strengthening and stretching sure. to that area. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the strengthening techniques you can do is just take a small ball. Ball. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having trouble saying that. Yeah, today. here, just use it. Okay. They don't know what you're talking about. You can do this laying down, or you can do it sitting like this, Brad, mm -hmm. and you're just going to do some squeezes. And they're going to be gentle to start with. Yep. If they shouldn't create any sharp pain, maybe a little discomfort, like a good working pain. Right. A little, you know, you're bumping up into the pain, as we yep. like to say. 10, 15 at the most is what I typically say. Sure. Start off with that. And then eventually you can do like three sets of 10. Sure. Or 15. Yep. Give a little, you know, minute rest in between, and you can work and rub that muscle a little bit. And then if you want to work some other parts of the fiber, you can actually take a larger ball. You know, and you could do the same thing here, or again, you could do a laying down. Right. And you could start doing squeezes like this. Right. Again, it's getting some of the different fibers now because we're further up. Right. The, the hips are more abducted, so different fibers have right. to work. And yeah. you could even go to the largest ball yeah. of all, the for, exercise For those ball. athletic people who are getting full range of motion, you know, plenty playing soccer, football, they're going to really work those legs. And I would even start doing a little bit, you know, at, at later on, Brad, maybe do a little bit of dynamics. Yeah. Go ahead and yeah. squeeze yeah. and bring it up here. Now you're you a little bit of it. Getting the hip flexors, that it's, I mean, it's acting as a hip flexor and a hip adductor. A absolutely, Bob. So this is a little more advanced. Okay, that's enough, Bob. <laughs> Brad tries to keep me on track. It's really difficult. <laughs> All right, if you don't have a ball, one of the th simple things you can start with is just laying on your side and doing hip adduction. Sure, then. sure. Do you want to do it? No. Okay, no. I'll do it. I had something else on my mind. That's why I said no. I, oh. I didn't want to miss. Go ahead. Okay. So really just lay on your side, got the other leg up, and you're going to just start doing some lifts like this. And, and this, is, this is one of those that looks a lot harder than it... I it mean, looks a lot easier than it is. Right. Yeah. I know I didn't say that right. <laughs> I think I get that speech therapist. Yeah. yeah. And you can do a little bit of hold when you bring it up. And it's not hard for the first six, <laughs> and then it starts getting a little bit yeah, more difficult. Right. You have to understand I'm 56 years old, though, too, so wow. I might not be he, a good example. He let example. the information out. I let it out, yeah. All right. Um, what about the stretches, Bob? Do you, yeah, we'll show the other the band um, at oh, the end. Oh, yeah, because that's, that's more a, advanced. A little more advanced. All right. The stretches that we're going to want you to do before an event are mm -hmm. different than what we want you to do after an event, especially when you're in what we call sports where you need a lot of power mm -hmm. and, you know, quick stop and start. Yeah, using um, those fast You want to do dynamic stretching. Sure. Because if you stretch the fibers too much, before an event like that, you actually take some of the power away. Okay. So, so let's just show them. So very simple. What you're going to do, I'll give Lonnie a second to adjust the, the camera. This is my involved leg. Yeah. You're going to do it on both sides. But you're going to do some swings like this. And I think you've seen people doing this, right, the, Brad? The, I think in a lot of sports, these are very common. Yeah. Right. And so. the leg is relaxed. You're just getting the muscles yep. to stretch and relax at the same so time. So you can go straight back, and you can also turn your foot this way a little bit because it starts getting a little bit of... But the other one you're going to want to do is actually going back and forth right. like this. This is one where if you're up against a wall in front of you is, is the way I, I kind of like to do it. Then you're swinging this way. If the wall is here, use your imagination there. Let yep. that leg relax. And obviously, you know, you want to don't take it to the point where you're actually injuring things, but start off with small um, oscillations. spans, yeah. oscillations, and then work to larger ones. Yeah, use good judgment. You remember, you got an injured muscle there. You don't want to re-injure it by doing too aggressive of a warm-up. Now, in the evenings, then you can do static stretches, Brad. Sure. That's where you can do a stretch where you can go ahead and, you know, go ahead. Um, well, I'm going to show this one, Brad. Give me a pillow. Yep. This is a good one to do. You're going to put your knee down. you down, Lonnie. I'm stretching this side. I'm going to bring the foot out like this. And this chair is in the way, Brad. I'll come over here more. That's what happens when you're six and a half foot tall. Yeah. <laughs> you need a big room. So I'm starting with the toe forward f first for 30 seconds. Sure. Okay. And then I'm going to put the toe at a 45 degree angle, Brad. Yeah. So... We're talking about this right here. So straight forward, 
45, 45, and then you're going to go up to 90 for the last 30 seconds. And what that's doing is that's rotating the hip where these muscles connect, so we're getting a stretch in the hip as well. Again, one of those things that looks, looks minuscule, but it can be real helpful. It, right. This is just a good stretch. You want to have good posture. Right. You want to, don't want to be leaning this way or, mm -hmm. or this way. Sure. And um, why don't we finish off, Brad, with that dynamic strengthening oh, yeah. with the band. This, this is a, if you can use some fair tubing, you get a wrist or foot strap. Foot strap, ankle strap. And with this, I will start, how, how are we doing, Lonnie? Can you, can you? Yeah, that's fine if you just, that's all you're yeah, seeing. Yeah, we don't, they don't want to see my face yeah. and head anyways. So you see the resistance. I vary the resistance, obviously, by how far I walk away or by the color of the band. But I'm going to go on flexion. Then I can turn 90 degrees, and here we're going right directly at those hip abductors, that groin muscles working directly right now. Don't overwork it when it gets fatigued. Stop. But, you know, and you could go all four directions. You could work this yeah. way. Certainly not going to hurt you. That's certainly, that, that's going to be good for your hip overall. Exactly. In this oh. way. And it's good for your balance. It's one of those things, like Bob mentioned, this is getting you ready for the activity again. It's, right. It's right that's before you're going to go out and do the real thing. Exactly. So thanks for watching. All right.